Agnes Robertson Arbor FRS, February 23, 1879, March 22, 1960, was a British plant morphologist and anatomist, historian of botany and philosopher of biology. She was born in London but lived most of her life in Cambridge, including the last 51 years of her life. She was the first woman botanist to be elected as a Fellow of the Royal Society, March 21, 1946, at the age of 67, and the third woman overall. She was the first woman to receive the Gold Medal of the Linnean Society of London, May 24, 1948, at the age of 69, for her contributions to botanical science. Her scientific research focused on the monocotyledon group of flowering plants. She also contributed to development of morphological studies in botany during the early part of the 20th century. Her later work concentrated on the topic of philosophy in botany, particularly on the nature of biological research. Biography Agnes Arbor was born on February 23, 1879 in London. She was the first child of Henry Robertson, an artist and Agnes Lucy Turner and had three younger siblings, Donald Struan Robertson, who later became Regius Professor of Greek in the University of Cambridge, Janet Robertson who later became a portrait painter and Margaret Robertson, married name Hills who edited Keats. Her father gave her regular drawing lessons during her early childhood, which later provided her with the necessary skills to illustrate her scientific publications herself. At the age of eight Arbor began attending the North London Collegiate School founded and run by Frances Buss, one of the leading proponents for girls' education. Under the direction of the school's science teacher Miss Edith Aitken, Arbor discovered a fascination with botany, publishing her first piece of research in 1894 in the school's magazine and later coming first in the school's botany examinations, winning a scholarship. It was here that Arbor first met Ethel Sargent, a plant morphologist who gave regular presentations to the school science club. Sargent would later become her mentor and colleague having a profound influence on Arbor's research interests and methods. In 1897 Arbor began studying at University College, London, gaining her B.Sc. In 1899, after gaining an entrance scholarship Arbor became a member of Newnham College, Cambridge and took a further degree in Natural Sciences. She gained first-class results in every examination at both universities, along with several prizes and medals from University College, London. After finishing her Cambridge degree in 1902 Arbor worked in the private laboratory of Ethel Sargent for a year, before returning to University College, London as holder of the Quain Studentship in Biology. She was awarded a doctorate of science in 1905. Agnes Arbor married paleobotanist Edward Alexander New Arbor, 1870-1918, in 1909 and moved back to Cambridge, where she would remain for the rest of her life. Her only child Muriel Agnes Arbor was born in 1913. Arbor and her husband had many interests in common and her marriage was described as happy. Arbor was awarded a research fellowship from Newnham College in 1912 and published her first book Herbals, Their Origin and Evolution in the same year. Her husband Newell Arbor died in 1918 following a period of ill health. Arbor never married, but continued with her research. She studied in the Balfour Laboratory for Women from her marriage until the laboratory's closure in 1927. Arbor maintained a small laboratory in the back room of her house from then until she stopped performing bench research in the 1940s and turned to philosophical study. Agnes Arbor died on March 22, 1960 at the age of 81.
scientific career early career, before attending University College, London Arbor spent the summer of 1897 working with Ethel Sargent in her private laboratory in Reagate where Sargent instructed her on microtechniques used to prepare plant specimens for microscopic examination. Arbor returned to work in Sargent's laboratory at least once during the summer holidays while she was studying at University College London. Sargent employed Arbor between 1902 to 1903 as a research assistant working on seedling structures during which time in 1903 she published her first paper notes on the anatomy of Macrosomia heteromera in Proceedings of the Cambridge Philosophical Society. Whilst at University College London Arbor conducted research on the gymnosperm group of plants, producing several papers on their morphology and anatomy. The study and philosophy of plant morphology would become the central focus of her later work. Balfour Laboratory In 1909 Arbor was granted space in the Balfour Laboratory for Women by Newnham College. This building had been purchased and founded by the two women's colleges of the university in 1884 for the use of their students and researchers. Women at this time were not permitted to attend laboratory demonstrations and practical classes. Arbor worked in the laboratory until its closure in 1927. Following the award of the research fellowship by Newnham College between 1912 to 1913 Arbor published her first book in 1912. Herbals their origin and evolution describes the transformation of printed herbals between 1470 to 1670. Arbor links the emergence and development of botany as a discipline within natural history with the evolution of plant descriptions, classifications and identifications seen in herbals during this period. Arbor was able to consult a large collection of printed herbals in the library of the Botany School at Cambridge as part of her research for this work. It was largely rewritten and expanded for a second edition published in 1938, was published as a third edition in 1986 and is still considered the standard work for the history of herbals. Arbor focused her research on the anatomy and morphology of the monocot group of plants, which she had originally been introduced to by Ethel Sargent. By 1920 she had taught our two books and 94 other publications. Her second book Water Plants, A Study of Aquatic Angiosperms was published in 1920. In this book Arbor presents a comparative study of aquatic plants by analyzing differences in their morphology. Arbor also provides interpretations of the general principles she used to create her analysis. Her study was the first to provide a general description and interpretation of aquatic plants. In 1925 Arbor published her third book The Monocotheledons. The editors of the Cambridge Botanical Handbooks series had asked Ethel Sargent in 1910 to prepare a volume on the monocots for this series. However ill health and advancing years made it almost impossible for Sargent to complete the book, and in 1918 she suggested Arbor to complete the work. The Monocotyledons continues Arbor's morphological methods of analysis she presented in Water Plants. She provides a detailed study of the monocot plants from comparing their internal and external anatomy. However her discussion of the general principles she uses in her analysis are more explicit in this volume, as she discusses the methods and philosophy of morphological study. Although comparative anatomical analysis as demonstrated in the monocotyledons and water plants, a study of aquatic angiosperms was central to botanical investigation in the early 20th century. There were distinct differences between British and European researchers concerning the aims of morphological study. 
Arbor addressed this by creating a distinction between pure and applied morphology, with her work focusing on comparative anatomy to investigate questions concerning significant topics such as constructing phylogenies, instead of using traditional views of plant structure. This view was further developed in her later work. Later work after the closure of the Balfour Laboratory Arbor set up a small laboratory in the back room of her house to conduct her research, after the resident head of the Botany School Professor Albert Charles Seward claimed there was no space in the school for Arbor to continue her research using its facilities. Arbor had been introduced to the idea of private research from her time spent with Ethel Sargent in 1902-1903, and from later comments to members of Gurdon College Natural Sciences Club and in letters to friends she stated she liked working at home due to challenges posed by independent research, despite not originally making the choice herself. After the publication of the Monocotyl Leader, Zarbra continued her research into this group, concentrating her research into the Graminia E family of plants, especially cereals, grasses, and bamboo. This led to the publication of her final book concerning plant morphology, the Graminia E, in 1934. In this book, Arbor described the life cycles, embryology and reproductive and vegetative cycles of cereals, grasses and bamboo using comparative anatomical analysis of these plants. Recognizing the importance of these plants to the development of human societies, Arbor begins this study with the history of these plants in relation to humans, with the more strictly botanical aspect is treated as developing out of the human cystic. The book was preceded by ten papers in the Annals of Botany detailing the results of her research. Between 1930-1942 Arbor conducted research into the structure of flowers, where she investigated the structure of many different forms and used to morphological information to interpret other flower structures. Her results were published in ten review papers spanning this period. In 1937 she published a summary of the morphological ideas which had been discussed concerning floral structure, which was considered an important review article for morphological studies. In January 1942 Arbor published her last paper involving original botanical research. All of her subsequent publications were entirely concerned with historical and philosophical topics. Philosophical Studies During the Second World War Arbor found it difficult to maintain her small laboratory, as supplies were becoming more difficult to obtain. This led to her decision to stop performing laboratory work and to concentrate more on philosophical and historical issues. Arbor published work on historical botanists including a comparison between Nehemiah Gru and Marcello Malpighi in 1942, John Ray in 1943 and Sir Joseph Banks in 1945. Arbor had been introduced to the work of Goethe while at school and remained fascinated by his ideas about botany. In 1946 she published Goethe's Botany, a translation of Goethe's Metamorphosis of Plants. 1790, and Georg Christoph Doblers, 1757-1812, dying at her with an introduction and interpretation of the texts. The Natural Philosophy of Plant Form, published in 1950 has been considered the most important of Arbor's books. Arbor discusses the processes behind forming a concept from research and examines the philosophy of plant morphology. Arbor uses this to examine the structure of flowering plants, and proposes the partial shoot theory of the leaf. According to this theory, each element of the plant is a shoot or partial shoot. Leaves are partial shoots that show reduced growth capacity. She mentions, the leaf is a partial shoot, revealing an inherent urge towards becoming a whole shoot, 
but never actually attaining this goal, since radial symmetry and the capacity for apical growth suffer inhibition. The parallelism of leaf and shoot dates back to Goethe, who first described compound leaves as in reality branches, the buds of which cannot develop, since the common stalk is too frail. For arbor, compound leaves are clusters of united partial shoots. Recent developmental genetic evidence has supported aspects of the partial shoot theory of the leaf, especially in the case of compound leaves. Her studies on the philosophy of plant morphology led her to take a broader view of the links between science and philosophy. The Mind and the Eye, a biologist's standpoint published in 1954 provides an introduction to biological research and develops a methodology for performing this research. Arbor describes research as taking place in six stages the identification of research question or topic, the collection of data through experiments or observation, the interpretation of the data, testing the validity of the interpretation, communicating the results, and considering the research in context. For Arbor, the context includes interpreting the result in terms of history and philosophy and covers half of the book. Arbor's book is distinctive in that it was written before Thomas Kuhn demonstrated that scientists' views are influenced by the views of others in their field and before Ernst Mayer's criticism of describing the philosophy of biology in the same way as the philosophy of physics. Her final book, The Manifold and the One published in 1957 is concerned with wider philosophical questions. The book is a wide-ranging and syncretic survey, drawing on literary, scientific, religious, mystical and philosophical traditions, incorporating Buddhist, Hindu and Taoist philosophy with European philosophy, in pursuit of a discussion of the mystical experience which Arbor defines as that direct and unmediated contemplation which is characterized by a peculiarly intense awareness of a whole as the unity of all things. Thank you.